Hello, welcome to Geeking Out with Shad. It is morning, uh, just started the car, you can hear the fan going. Um, I did the remote start for about three minutes or so before I got in the car and started it. Um, so it's starting to already defrost the windows. Um, 14 degrees out, uh, according to the car, according to my phone, it said 10 degrees out, so I don't really know which temperature is more accurate. <laughs> so um, it is what it is, but it's somewhere in there. It's pretty cold out. Um, my car uses a lot more battery when it's this cold out. Um, and so what I'm realizing is when you get into these colder temps like this, which I don't see a lot of EV testing going on or not a lot of reviews, I see around 40 degrees or whatever. <laughs> But when it gets this cold, car needs a lot of juice. So it's uh, my average um, miles per kilowatt hour right now is 1.9. Um, a lot of that has to do with the fact that I have to warm the car up. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing these little short uh, drives all the time because I'm in the city. I don't go, I'm not going long distances. I think the longest distance I've gone in the last week or so is like 15 miles to go to the bike shop and come back to get some parts for a bike build I'm doing which is on my other channel if you're ever interested in that that's shad life um, but and then my work is six miles away I go to Starbucks in the morning which is like four miles away so it's like these little short trips so a lot of the car's energy is spent coming from a cold start warming the car up and the battery conditioning and then me driving so I'm gonna get much lower uh, miles per kilowatt hour doing that versus if I just got the car warmed up got in it and drove it for a longer distance so it's almost like an opposite of what it is like in the summertime because in the summertime uh, driving longer distances and driving steady like on the highway the battery um, gets used more than if I'm stopping and going and driving in the city and doing a lot of short trips uh, and that's pretty much 100% because the car has to heat itself and do all this stuff to keep it conditioned and to keep me warm and all that stuff so um, it is what it is but what that means is that it makes this car very much like a, a commuter car that I have to charge at home more regularly in the winter time than I do in the summertime and things like that. Um, it's certainly not a like road trip worthy car, especially in the winter. In the summer, yes, or maybe not even summer, but you know, in you know, 45, 50 degree temps and above, it's probably fine for road trips if you don't mind stopping every couple hundred miles to recharge. So um, that being said, uh, I'm going to put uh, my GoPro on my head and talk a little bit about how this car drives in the snow. I do have my winter tires on the car and just talk a little bit about how it drives in the snow. Um, what I do do is I turn off the regen in the snow. So I drive it like a normal car using the brake. If I have this on, really only the front wheels are doing work when I let off the um, accelerator. And then it's only the front wheels trying to slow the car down and it, it it works okay if I'm just if I'm careful but um, if I use the brake then I'm doing all four wheels and doing it more traditional so it's a little safer to use the brake than it is to use the regen um, so that's basically what it is so let's talk about how the car drives in the snow here I'm gonna wait till my window gets cleared off and then I'll do some uh, filming of me driving the car Okay, so this is what we mostly have all winter long is 
this kind of hard packed road surface. Um, yes, we get snowstorms and things like that and we have to get through the snow, but that's only when there's a, a snowfall or a snowstorm. For the large majority of driving, the roads are like this because they get plowed, but the road surface still has this layer of packed snow over it. And that's pretty much the state the roads will be in all winter with the exception of some of the little uh, warm uh, fronts we have that come through throughout winter. Um, and so that's why having dedicated snow tires is necessary because this is the kind of surface that actually gets pretty slippery so i'm gonna just hit the brakes here and yeah it just slides the anti-lock brakes kick in things like that so it's relatively slippery and the big thing is is acceleration so if i come to a stop here and then i need to you know i know there's no cars i need to accelerate and get on here then i gotta get going and I notice cars that don't have winter tires on it when they're in that situation they just sit there and spin quite a bit and they have to sit there and spin and they just slowly creep forward you gotta turn these seats down I'm getting baked <laughs> um, the they slowly creep forward and spin the tires you can see the little icy right there um, and everybody has to wait for them because they're just like <gasps> getting going I'm on ice right now I can tell the car is sliding so um, these tires grip ice better than regular all-season tires by a lot not just a little bit better but by a lot so when this light turns green I'm on ice so it's gonna slip see how this car is slipping it's going to the right but it gets moving very quickly now a car I'm looking at the car behind me while well, they're turning so I didn't get to see but I'll see these cars get in that situation and they just they almost can't move like the person has to sit there and spin their wheels to get going and it's those intersections like I was just at that are going to be icy and they're icy mostly because most cars have exhaust and they're gas powered and the exhaust melts the snow on the ground and then it refreezes and becomes ice so the intersections always tend to be a little icy so uh smart people <laughs> here in minnesota know that you start braking really early when you come up on an intersection you don't wait until the last minute to put on your brake like you do in dry conditions you actually start slowing down and then you creep up to the light um, rather than charging up to it and then hitting the brakes at the last moment but you'll always see that person that just doesn't really quite understand I don't know how they don't learn <laughs> and they'll come charging up to an intersection they'll put on the brakes and they'll go sliding right through the intersection or right into the intersection usually and it's just like how do you not know how to drive in these conditions it just it boggles my mind sometimes and a lot of times they have bad tires their tires are either worn or they didn't put winter tires on things like that this road is more maintained they salt it or prep it or whatever i think they're trying to get away from salt but they use some kind of mixture um, and they prep the road surface um, so it gets cleared much more than the side roads but it's still like sometimes the intersections can still be icy things like that or if i was to get over move over to the right a little bit more off of the track the tire tracks where all the cars are driving it's slippery or things like that so these tires make a difference let's talk a little bit about the car um what i like is like with a gas powered car when you have traction control it's got to do all it's it sounds kind of gnarly when it's like trying to like reduce power and get your tires to get traction what i like about this car is i can just push on the accelerator and go like i normally would and i just let the car uh take control of trying to get me going i can kind of pulse the accelerator a little bit if I feel like the car's not doing a very good job the car usually does a pretty good job see now notice how I 
slowed down quite early before I got here and I am on ice again so even though this is a prep throat see now I gotta try to get going spinning 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 you can see the little traction control light but I just push on the accelerator and let the car do it and it works and I get going and if you uh, don't have good tires that isn't gonna work for you <laughs> so now we're on another road that's well maintained these are called snow emergency routes these are the first ones they plow and spray the stuff on and and um, make them nice but those those chemicals or whatever they're using on the roads only work when it's warmer out it's 14 degrees I think that's kind of right around when those chemicals don't work very well so all right I'm gonna go get my coffee and then we'll talk a little bit more about how this car drives um, on my way back okay I'm here to get my coffee and I just wanted to briefly mention the difference between front wheel drive and all wheel drive and so when I'm at the the light turns green and I'm on that ice and I'm spinning it I just have front wheel drive I have winter winter tires so it's gonna take me a little bit more to get going um, I noticed an all-wheel drive car behind me that just had no problem getting going so an all-wheel drive car will give you that initial startup uh, that initial get up and go much better than a front-wheel drive car and um, also if you have dedicated winter tires on an all-wheel drive car then it's like a snowmobile right like you got like the best combo of all combos right um, so it is a little better to have an all-wheel drive car when it comes to being able to like, get up and go when it's time to go right outside from that an all-wheel drive car doesn't really do you any other give you any other benefits it doesn't help you stop quicker doesn't help you corner better it doesn't help you do any of that stuff it only really helps you go forward faster but when if you have to go and then you have to stop your stopping is going to be exactly the same as any other car out there rear wheel drive front wheel drive whatever so just keep that in mind a lot of people i feel like they get overconfident when they have all wheel drive i'm i love all wheel drive and uh, my tacoma i'll sometimes put it on four x four mode when i'm in those situations for that reason four x four is different than all wheel drive but at least it's all four wheels working and it just goes and it doesn't have dedicated winter tires although it does have light truck tires which kind of have a much better all season uh, capability than uh, a regular car with all season tires so so i just wanted to mention that um and i will get the id4 out with which has all wheel drive and do a comparison and talk a little bit about that in another video sometime but i'm gonna go get my coffee and then head back Okay, so we're back on this kind of stuff. So let's just talk about, um, hey, by the way, if you see a cyclist, give them three feet of space when you pass them. Do not buzz them, please. This is like the most dangerous thing you can do. The law says you gotta give cyclists three feet of space when you go around them, minimum. Uh, anyway, um, let's talk about how this car drives. Um, it, I mean, even in these conditions, it is like such a nice car to drive. It is so smooth. It's seamless when you press on the accelerator, it just goes. It's got plenty of acceleration, especially when you consider that this is like this is crazy like it just takes off like a rocket like so I know that the 0 to 60 specs on this car are only 6.8 seconds according to uh, GM and so on and so forth what you have to keep in mind is this is a front wheel drive car so getting traction from a complete stop is nearly impossible especially with a car like this that has as much torque and power um, at the start so you're never going to be able to get a very quick 0 to 60 time but if you equip this car with super sticky tires or did something like that 
I can almost guarantee you you'd be able to get that time down to closer to closer to the six second mark zero to 60 um, because once this car is rolling and as long as you're not I'm being cautious around the corner because otherwise you go but once this car is rolling and you press on the accelerator it is it presses you into the seat it goes it has it's very sporty and I don't even have the sport thing pressed um, when I push the little sport button the um, accelerator is much more responsive and stuff but it's but it, how this car drives is like a dream it's like if you were to compare it to like a Cadillac or something or a really you know cushy luxury car I feel like an entry-level electric car is like feels like an uh, a luxury car um, <laughs> people make me nervous when they're like out in the street like that all right so um, there it's super smooth there's no shifting there's no engine revs it's quiet it's it's pretty impressive how an electric car feels and keep in mind this is like the least expensive the most base model of electric cars this isn't the base model of the bolt euv this is actually the top of the line of the bolt euv but it's in cars when we compare electric cars even the volkswagen id4 is way more bougie than this car and drives nicer and more luxuriously and a bit more sporty and stuff um and then you have like teslas and things like that that are even more luxurious but pretty much all electric cars drive so much nicer than ice cars internal combustion engine cars. it is super impressive with how nice this car drives and when I need to accelerate or maneuver the car or whatever it just does what I want it to do on command instantaneously there's no delay it doesn't have to downshift to get into the power band or anything like that like a internal combustion engine car does and there's a certain fun factor especially if you drive a manual with internal combustion engine cars of downshifting getting the revs up the noise it makes i understand that i'm not saying that's not cool or fun but i'm from up here i'm driving i'm trying to get from point a to point b and i want a really nice relaxing experience electric cars just absolutely dominate if i i understand the enthusiasts of wanting a sports car that you have to manually control and downshift and all of that i love that i've had cars like that before and my tacoma is a manual and i do like that feeling but it's a lot more involvement in the car and you have to actually enjoy that kind of thing most people like to just have the simplicity of driving um these pallets on this thing it just always makes me seem sketchy like what's even holding them on like one strap going across the top <laughs> oh boy um anyway sorry um so it, it i don't know how better to describe it it's just such a nice driving car for like if i was to think of an entry level car in the ice world of course it's gonna cost a lot less because like right now at least electric cars do cost more but like um let's just even think of the subaru cross track like this one right here even though it's all-wheel drive it's pretty much kind of your base car or an impreza is kind of like the cross track with all, all the off-roady stuff right um it's gonna have all-wheel drive so it's gonna have better traction than this stuff but as far as like the driving experience this car blows it away this car is way quicker way quicker because those cars aren't that fast this car's handles better it's just way better experience to drive even a prius like what we see up there i i really don't like how priuses drive they are so terrible although that being said the Toyota just introduced the 2023 model prius and it is supposed to be way better driving dynamics better acceleration they're claiming a zero to 60 of six seconds 
um, that's gonna be a huge change in what Priuses used to be like um, so if you're into the hybrid thing and you're and so on uh, definitely start taking interest in the 2023 Prius because it certainly isn't going to be the terrible experience that previous Priuses have delivered. Sure they get great gas mileage but driving them is just not very fun. Cool. All right well I'm almost back home so I am going to end this video. Okay so there you have it. Um, that's my latest update. Um, the average uh, kilowatt hours is down to 1.8 right now. So we're looking at like 120 miles, 110 to 120 miles of range if it stays in these cold temps for a long time. Uh, temperatures tend to go up and down. Like later today, it's going to be into the low 30s. So that's going to affect, you know, the car and make the car more efficient and so on and so forth so these extreme cold temps um at least this electric car kind of falls on its face i'm gonna be honest it's, it's like when it's this cold it will not get near the range that you would expect it to get and it's mostly because it doesn't have a heat pump mostly because the battery technology is still when did they come out with this car 2015 something more around there 2016 anyway um, they haven't changed the technology in the bolt even though they redid the car itself and came out with the EUV it's all the same technology there are newer battery technologies GM has the Altium platform now um, things like that so it's gonna be interesting to see how car companies tackle these colder climates like this because right now um, aside from some of the EVs that have heat pumps, they don't really do well when it's this cold out. They just don't. It's And there's a lot of reasons for that. And I've been talking about them, mostly keeping the cabin warm, using the climate. And yes, I've said this before, you can do these extreme things and not run the temperature uh, at 72 and you can use this heated seats and the steering wheel and all that stuff to keep yourself warm but I want to be comfortable I want to drive this car like I would a gas powered car and in a gas powered car I set the temperature at 72 degrees so I just want to treat this like a normal car and not act like I have to do all these extreme things because that's the whole point of having a car and using it is not so you have to do all these like extreme measures and be uncomfortable in your car in order to uh, drive it right so to conclude my recommendation would be if you have an apartment or you don't have access to a charger really easy access to a charger um, I don't know if an EV, or at least this kind of EV, the Bolt, is right for you. A Tesla would probably be a good car to have um, in that scenario because they have better efficiency in the cold, heat pumps, they have bigger batteries so they have more range, things like that, and anything that kind of competes in that Tesla realm, but then that's going to be a much more expensive car, right? But the Bolt EUV, city commuter car all day long awesome uh, anything above and beyond that in the cold winter temps anyway you're gonna have to charge a lot more and so you just have to keep in mind now somebody that owns a home or even better yet somebody that has a heated garage with a charger in it then you're golden because then you don't have to do this warm-up all the time I do have a charger in the garage. The garage is not heated and we generally don't park in the garage probably because we're into bicycles and the garage doesn't have room for a car and it's a pretty small garage. So um, you can plug in and preheat the battery and stuff overnight, things like that. If you have a heated garage, your car's already warm, the battery doesn't need to condition, things like that. So those are the ideal scenarios. You're gonna get a lot more range out of your car and a lot better situations in these extreme colder temps. So um, that's who I would say is best suited for an EV of this type um, 
is the technology has a little ways to go before we can say EVs for everyone. Keep in mind, I did just mention the new Prius. <laughs> um, I'm very curious, how much is that thing gonna cost? And if it drives as nice as it does, or even a used Prius, if you're using it as just a commuter car and you don't care how the car drives that much, awesome. Those are options to get optimized uh, your miles per gallon and things like that if you really want to um, have an affordable driving experience. I'd be curious to do the math. I bet you a Prius compared to uh, this car cost-wise and stuff are going to be pretty close when it comes to energy costs because if you're getting 50 miles per gallon that's going to significantly reduce how much you pay for gasoline and stuff like that. So, um, awesome. I'm kind of rambling on, but I'm kind of trying to help you out if you're deciding to move into an EV. Um, I want you to know what the ideal scenario is. You own a home, you have a charger at home, perfect. You use your car for commuting, city commuting. Your commute isn't like super long i do know people that drive 50 miles a day to go to work <laughs> to and back so that's 100 miles in a day i <laughs> yeah you probably don't want one of these if, if you live in this cold of a climate if you live in a warmer climate you're fine right but in this cold of a climate that would be you'd be borderline pushing it on the charge unless you can charge while you're at work right um but somebody that lives in an apartment or, or rents or something and doesn't have easy access to a charger, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. You're gonna have to have a charger. You're gonna have to usually pay to uh, charge your car. It's pretty cheap, but you'll still have to pay to do it and so on and so forth. So there you have it. I appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace. By the way, if you live in a warm climate, perfect car all day long it is perfect for a warm climate all year round